I like working with materials. I grew up on a farm. My father let me have free range of stuff that he had in a barn. And I think it's always just carried on through. I've always been a very sort of physically active person and I like to be able to um, choose and choose the material that's most appropriate for an idea. And that's really important to me. I've been living down here for about 10 years and I wanted to come up with a nautical theme piece, but I didn't want to do something that was directly recognisable. So I've been working with a model of a boat and basically hover slicing it with a bandsaw and working with the shapes. And what will happen in the end, most probably something like that would be laser cut out of cotton steel, which is an automatically rusty steel, um, or steel itself, and I'll work with fabricators. Um, so when I first came down here, that's one thing I, which was really important for me, was to find metal workers I could have a good relationship with, and also carpenters. And so I can do the casting side of things if that's needed but um, I basically have teams who I can work with um, to take me through processes. When I left college, I was very much working for the industry, as in I worked for bronze foundries and uh, theatre and conservators, people who would deal with artefacts or whatever. So it was always within 3D. It was quite a wide scope of vocations you could go into. And um, I always had a studio on the side. So whatever I learned basically was a way of informing my own personal work. In the past, I've done collections of bodies of heads. I will choose the people for a certain reason. I've recently done a smaller body of heads with youngsters who are in Hastings and also sort of friends of my children. The only problem about children, <laughs> or your own children, is they want money for it. <laughs> when they were very young, I used to ha always keep a bust peg behind the door of the bathroom, so while they were having a bath, I used to quickly just work a bit of clay and then put a bag over it. That was almost painless. If a head goes on for too long, it becomes very laboured. And in fact, it isn't a joy to live with. You know, you can live with it, and um, it's actually quite dull to look at. Whereas there's a lot of movement in something that's been executed fast. If a head becomes too overworked, I tend to put it aside and start a new one and do it as quickly as possible. And that ends up, you end up with a very gestural, lively snapshot of someone. And um, that's taken me a long time to learn. A long time to learn. Right, I'm going to leave that to go off. So. I basically use both hands. I become ambidextrous, which normally I work with my right. I write with my right hand but I can apply clay with both hands at the same time and you literally work both sides of the face at the same time. And then um, to do the finer detail, I'll work with my right hand. But um, you do have tools and generally the bigger the sculpture, the bigger the tool. But I try not to use too much. I mean, I, I ended up having, I was awarded a mentor for two days, um, a great guy, a well-known sculptor actually, Martin Jennings. And he came to my studio, a mate of mine sat with us, he was the model. 
And um, Martin just sat there and watched me work for a couple of hours. He busied himself doing his own bust. And then after a while he said, you know what, you go into the tools too quickly. He said, here, use this. And he gave me a two by two piece of wood, like a huge baton. He said, just model with this for the next, for the rest of the afternoon. And suddenly you had to draw lines with it. You had to whack the sculpture with it. You found ways of working with an impractical piece of wood. And um, it just taught me how to map things out really quickly. And it was the best lesson ever.